Hi everybody again, this is Dr. Kat Fries from Central New Mexico Community College. We're continuing the female reproductive system with video E, in which we're focusing on both the ovarian as well as the uterine cycle. Let's take a look at the ovarian cycle first. And let's assume that in a perfect world that the ovarian cycle is about 28 days in length. Now all of us girls know that our ovarian cycles can vary significantly or they can be very consistent but can take longer or shorter. But just to learn about the cycle, let's just go with an average length of about 28 days. If that is the case, then usually the first 14 days are occupied by the follicular phase, meaning that's when our follicles are growing. At the end of this phase, one of those follicles, the Graafian follicle, will ovulate during the ovulatory phase. The last phase is called the luteal phase because this is the time when our corpus luteum is producing progesterone and estrogen. Now, in a 28-day cycle, this typically tends to be the last two weeks, although this can vary, and if it varies, it doesn't vary within the same woman. In other words, um, a particular woman will tend to have the same length of luteal phase, even though her luteal phase might only be 12 days, or it might be 15 days. It tends to be 15 days then with each one of her cycles. What we can do now with the help of this figure is relate oogenesis, which we see at the top here, with the three phases of the ovarian cycle. So here we see the primordial follicles maturing into our primary follicles, secondary follicles, and eventually we end up with one um, graphian follicle or tertiary follicle. Notice that the secondary oocyte that's about to be uh, ovulated sits kind of off on a stalk which is very typical for that follicle. And so what we find then is that the follicular phase corresponds to the maturation of our, um, of our follicles into that graphian follicle. A secondary oocyte is released during ovulation by that graphian follicle and that is immediately followed by the formation of the, glute uh, the corpus luteum during the, during the luteal phase. Remember that some of these granulosa cells stay behind and help form uh, the corpus luteum, along with some of the theca cells as well. If fertilization does not occur, the corpus luteum will eventually start to degenerate, becomes the corpus albicans, and becomes smaller and smaller. Now while the ovary is busy going through its ovarian cycle, the uterus also goes through changes and so we talk about the uterine or the menstrual cycle. It is also characterized by three phases. Now these phases don't overlap um, or not all of them overlap exactly with the ovarian cycle phases. The only uterine phase that overlaps with um, one of the ovarian phases is the, the last one, the so-called secretory or post-ovulatory phase. It corresponds to the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle. During this time, the endometrium actually prepares the uterus for the arriving embryo. But so let's take a look at the two earlier phases. So the time period when um, a female bleeds or has her menses, as we say, or um, has her period, menses is sometimes used, with, that is the, the menstrual phase, and that takes a few days. It can really vary from female to female. This is when the uterus sheds the, um, the stratum functionalis of the endometrium. This is then followed by the so-called proliferative phase, and as the name says, this is the time 
when the endometrium proliferates or basically builds, rebuilds itself. This is going to take from about 6 to 14. Once again, we're assuming a cycle of 28 days in a perfect world. And then finally, we get to the secretory phase. Notice that we can refer to the proliferative phase as the pre-ovulatory phase, while we can refer to the secretory phase as the post-ovulatory phase. By the way, we also refer to this as the secretory phase because this is also when um, the uterus is producing all kinds of secretions with the help of the glands that are maturing. So with the help of this figure then, we can compare the ovarian phases, ovarian cycle phases, with the uterine cycle phases. So notice that in the very center right here is when ovulation occurs. And that should be the start of the luteal phase. And that should be the start of the secretory phase. Again, called secretory phase because that's when the endometrium is preparing all of its glands um, in anticipation of an em embryo. Prior to ovulation, we have the follicular phase in the ovary happening and in the uterine, or in the uterus, I should say, we first have the sloughing off of the endometrium, while that then is followed by a phase of several days when the endometrium builds up again. So here we see the building up of the endometrium during the proliferative phase, and here it matures essentially with the help of the developing of all kinds of glands that are going to participate in helping the uh, embryo mature or develop. So this wraps up our discussion of the ovarian and uterine cycle and we related the ovarian cycle to oogenesis. We also related the ovarian cycle to the uterine cycle and therefore, you should also be able to refer or relate, I should say, the uterine cycle to oogenesis.